Here on the Outer Banks, we aren't blessed with any sort of reef system to hold fish. It's basically a desert underwater with nothing but sand, which usually isn't great for spearfishing. Luckily, this area is known as the Graveyard of the Atlantic due to the many shipwrecks we have offshore, some of which are so close you can swim or kayak to them. These not only provide shelter for some species, but end up growing things like mussels and barnacles, which will attract certain fish that feed on them, and then other fish that feed on those, and so on. These sheepshead are really delicious to eat. They have almost a crabby flavor, and they aren't really commercially fished, so it's a real treat when I can get out in the water and bring some home. Here I have spotted an even larger sheep's head in this hole. You can see a few other fish species in here. Hanging on, it's a bit of a long shot, but I'm waiting to line up to get just the perfect shot on this fish. I finally took my shot and my patience paid off with a perfect stone shot on this sheep's head. This means that I either hit the fish in the brain or spinal cord, paralyzing the fish, and this is best case scenario. With any of my catch, I practice the Ikejime method, which is one of the most humane ways to kill a fish and preserve the quality of its meat. If I don't kill it immediately with my shot, I'll do it with a quick knife to the brain to end its suffering, and then slit the gills to bleed the fish out. Using this method, there is a noticeable difference in both the look and taste of the meat. When conditions line up, some friends and I will hit wrecks in much deeper water offshore, where we can find some bigger, more exciting species, like this African pompano. Overall, spearfishing is widely misunderstood, but the truth is that it is the most sustainable method of harvesting fish because it is selective and there's no bycatch when done properly. And it's a wonderful, beautiful, raw experience. So with a fridge full of fresh fish, we set off to meet some friends out on the water and have a sunset dinner. Oh, and we finally got a dinghy. Here we are with our first attempt at using a halyard to get it off the deck into the water along with the outboard. And I think we did a pretty good job for our first try. And then I set off to the beach to pick up our good friends Matt and Frida, who you may notice is pregnant with their first child. There's a place, a garden for the young Laugh and dance and safety among the shimmering light and the shade of the trees. Steal a bite in paradise is lost. With darkened hearts, we didn't count the cost. Forgot all we left behind. Life picks up speed before you know. We hold on for dear life, oh Lord. We're too proud to turn back now. Breaks all crime, brings us down where we see. It's gonna be hard. I am currently on a six hour road trip to Maryland to buy a whisker pole. I found a really good deal on one, and we really need one, and so I'm biting the bullet and hitting the road. And um, I'm about to get smashed by a gigantic front. This, this is gonna be interesting. This looks so gnarly. This thing is moving so fast. It's so ominous right now. It's like getting darker by the second. Oh 
That was like the fastest moving front ever. It was over in about 10 minutes and it's totally fine outside now. I'm almost to this place. Here we are, six hours later at Anchors and Oars in Graysonville, Maryland. Well, this is going to have to do. Looks a little ridiculous, but I think we'll be safe. <laughs> I've got it strapped in pretty good. I don't see why this won't work. The Yaris coming through. With some dish soap vinegar and a lot of scrubbing, this thing looks as good as new. Not bad for 200 bucks. I very stupidly dropped the pin to our main halyard shackle overboard, so here I'm tying a bowline to the bosun chair. Whee! All that's left to do is reeve the new topping lift for the whisker pole as we continue to piece together a better downwind setup on cloud. This is all in preparation for our potential voyage south to the Bahamas this winter. I'll try to give you a little slack. Oh, there's another shiv right here. Huh. I wonder how that works. Oh, it's gonna need to go. Dang it. Um. It's gotta go outside the lazy jack. Yeah, but it's gonna have to go. Yeah. Reaving a line is the process of passing one through something like a block, which we're doing right here in our mast. Janie used some marine thread to sew what is known as a reaving loop on the end of our topping lift, to which I have attached a bicycle chain. A bicycle chain is used because it passes through blocks really easily, and it's weighted to help pull the line down the mast. And then it's easy to get out using something like a magnet, but in our case, we just used a wire hook. We haven't been very active on YouTube due to summer craziness, but Janie has been doing an awesome job keeping up with our Instagram, so be sure to follow us there. Good job. We've got some more big moves coming up as we put together the finishing touches on Cloud to get her ready for some proper long-term cruising. Got it. Thanks for watching. Yeah.